Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is many a true and welcome to Elix. Elix is one of those games that sort of just slipped under my radar during the busy launch period at the end of 2017, which is unfortunate because what Elix is is an open world post-apocalypse, sci-fi, and also kind of magical fantasy thing that's all about a narrative where choices have real consequences that actually matter, and also you have a jetpack. And that just sounds really, really damn cool. So this is me, my name is Jackson, I'm an Alb. That's basically this game's polite way of saying I'm the protagonist. You know, like Spectre and Witcher basically just means, yeah, this is just the person who everyone treats differently. I'm just going to go up to people and they're just going to assume I've got magical powers that can sort everything out and also I'm massively survivable and can pick up any weapon and use it pretty much immediately. Yeah, in this game, that's called an Alb. But unfortunately, I've just drawn character game start type 7B, meaning I've just been shot and left for dead by all the other albs for slightly unspecified reasons. So now I'm just a bloke and I've got a pipe. So this is my pipe and I'm going to whack things with my pipe and collect things. And also I'm probably going to jump over the... Or I'm going to get my... Okay, now my boots are all soggy. Right, well this adventure's not started bloody well. Oh, that's because I didn't hit the jump key correctly. Right, there's some glowing balls over here. Can I do anything with the glowing balls? No, the answer is no. Also, this guy has one of those things I always like in video game protagonists, which is, I feel like the height that he can jump is broadly in line with the height that I can jump. Because this is my jump. Yep, I could jump about that much. That is true. So that's just lovely. So here we are. We're in... I forget what the name of the place is. I think we're just going down the river and climbing up and diddly diddly d. Let's go find our way to... I think he wanted to go and find like a free city or something. The Elixis gone for my sister. I feel weak. Think. Think, Jax. My weapons. My armor. Did Kallax take them? No. No. If Kallax had seen I was still alive, he would have finished the job. It was someone else. So quick translation, Kallax is the guy that killed me and Elix is basically like, you know, Bioshock's Adam. Magic thing fell from sky, gives everyone magic powers, why the albs are so badass, but sadly I don't have any anymore. So I'm just going to have to kind of, you know, stick some more of that in myself at some point or something. And we've got ourselves a rat! Get the rat! Uh, okay, I feel like I don't need to necessarily combo to take out a rat there, but okay. Yeah, combat's sort of interesting. It's all about basically timings and rhythm and combos and whatever. So there we go, rat, and then go into a heavy attack and follow it up with, oh, slightly bigger rat. So heavier into that. And then when it becomes available, just tap Y to basically go into a frenzy that uses up my stamina, which seems to be that thing up in the top left there. So if I hammer attack buttons, basically I just burn through my stamina really quickly. I never really get up to proper power because yeah, I've burnt my stamina. But if I actually basically dance between heavy and light attacks, and I can just go light attack into heavy attack into that, and then I can tap Y, and then I can basically just start randomly swinging in front of me. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure why I want to start randomly swinging in front of me, but I'll tell you what, it's probably better than not. And as the dramatic music kicks off, I push my way through doors, and the hunt begins, apparently. So as I've just got a cutscene, I'm guessing this is the right way to go. So to kind of but notice, hang the flip on, back the way I just was, there was a little down fence over here. Right, so the game's not kidding when it says it's nice and open. There's actually, yeah, hang the flip on here. There's something around here. What is this up here? And am I ready to beat it up with my metal pipe? And only if I'm able to take on a flipping runt biter and then go into... I can parry with B or... Yeah, evade. Okay, so avoid and then whack it with a stick. And okay, my health is... Okay, I need to use the quick attacks. Okay, you guys are a bit on the nasty side apparently. Uh, yeah, I went in for a dive and then go. All right, this game's not kidding around. All right, me and you again, but this time better. So, avoid. Okay, wait for him to go over there. And now go for light attack. Into heavy attack. Into light attack. Into just randomly whacking him. Right, go into heavy. And then 
Avoid! And then go into light, into heavy, and my health has indeed gone down regardless. Right, and then I am ready to do a great big flail, but not just yet. Fine, so if I want to, I can use one health potion I'm carrying that is defaulted to up on the D-pad. Alright, well let's not do that just yet. Ooh, but, put this away. And I get myself some natural elix, the sort of elix as is preferred by hipsters. Marvellous. So yeah, this is literally area one, and I've just gone off the beaten track, and I've just found some nice upgrade stuff, and an adventurous amulet. Better and flipping better. Oh, go on then, as the game's gonna insist. I guess I'll use a health potion. <laughs> yeah, this game kind of sits weirdly between sci-fi and fantasy. I like it. And then I can just drop down back to the area I started in, over there. Well, isn't that just flipping marvellous? So yes, now I've got some extra natural elix. Can I do anything with that? Well, according to this, if I can consume it, I gain strength and reach the next level of evolution. That does seem rather good. I'm going to use it. My cold has increased. I don't know if that's really good or not, but I guess maybe it is. Right, big important question. Can I just basically throw myself straight off the... Okay, I can't do it like that, but if I was to get up onto here... Yeah, okay, there. No, boo! Boo, invisible walls, no. Well, never mind. My jetpack. Finally some luck. The guy that took my armor must have dropped it. Now, all I need to do is find a way out, cross kilometers of enemy territory, and find out why my brother tried to kill me. Oh, that's who Kallax is. Apparently he's my brother. Well, that makes him even more of a dick. Did you just say jetpack, by the way? Why, yes. Yes, you did. Like, we're literally five minutes into the game and you've given me a jetpack. That is the sort of thing a good game would do. So now, I don't just get my little jump anymore. Now, I get a jetpack. Okay, that is indeed much better. Itan, the land of the berserkers. If they recognize me... They could finish Kellogg's job for him. Now, I'm going to guess that ahead of me, which is apparently a berserker, is not going to be friendly. Yes? No? Maybe? Oh. What's he doing? Okay. No. He ain't gonna be friendly. If you're gonna make a habit of attacking people without warning, you should get better at it. I heard you before you even left the ruins. Someone tried to kill me. They stole my armor and my equipment. But didn't steal my jetpack, suggesting they were quite bloody stupid. I'm going back to Goliath. You can come with me if you like. Safety, security, and you can find work to earn enough to buy equipment. If you want a chance to survive, it's the best offer you'll get. That's why I joined the Berserkers. Out here, drifting, and hoping to stay alive. I knew it was only a matter of time before my luck ran out. I know joining a faction doesn't appeal to everyone, but it gave me purpose. And what have you got to lose right now? Nothing from what I can see. Oh, don't you worry, Jurus. An action RPG where I can join factions and I promise that choices actually have consequences that matter. I feel quite at home, in fact. Well, go on then. This guy seems decent enough, though he's probably going to betray me, because he is kind of, yeah, he's part of the Berserkers, and he's wearing what looks distinctly like evil armor, and he has got a sword on him, so... Not sure I entirely trust this guy, but go on then, take me to Goliath, let's get acclimatised to the game here. So, just need to follow this guy around, and actually, yeah, you need to actually, ooh, rusty axe, and small healing potion. Also, the game was like, well, if we get separated, then he just basically stops and waits for me. Yeah, if you've got a weapon out, you can't pick things up, you're just like, you know, not in the right mood. Uh, by the way, I also need to be um, picking flowers, it's just another thing I do. I'm a multifaceted individual like that. Sometimes I beat people to death with a big stick, sometimes I pick flowers. And the game is not kidding around, it's actually giving me choices. So we've got some ruins with a couple of clerics inside, a different faction who we could go and have a chat to. Or we could just say, screw that, it's apparently a bit dangerous, let's just head on to a nice safe town and I will just shine shoes for a living. No, go on then, let's give it a go, go into the- oh, this is a terrible idea. I ran into like one ostrich five minutes ago and it just murdered me. But okay, let's go into the ruins, meet some clerics and see what we can do to potentially talk them round. Let's go into the ruins. A brave choice. Opportunities are there to be seized. Alright, I took the hard path. 
Well, then I better flipping level up. So, I've now got 10 attribute points to actually don't run ahead. I'll help out in just a second. I just need to, like, level myself up a bit. So, nothing too complicated, really. Melee damage, amount of health you've got, ranged stuff, psi and magic and whatever, and cunning social skills. Fine, so a bit of speech and whatever. While I'm whacking things with a stick right now, let's take a little bit of strength. And let's take a little bit of constitution as well. And go on then, let's take a bit of cunning for talking people around as well. Marvellous. I've also got myself a learning point. Oh, blimey. And a lot of different skills I could put it into. Ah, but you don't just pick them out of the field. You need to actually find an appropriate trainer to train you up in. And also, you need a certain amount of uh, elixir, which I think is like currency and skill point availability, and you need to actually pass threshold with your special, or rather, I suppose, not special. Instead, it's S-C-D-I-C. So, Skudik. You've just got to get your Skudik up to the right level, otherwise you can't take perks. Gotcha. Also, apparently the Rusty Axe I just found is better than my Iron Bar. Well, that's just flipping marvellous. I guess we'll just actually put that straight over there. Lovely. And now I've got a big axe, and I'm a bit stronger at whacking things with my axe, etc, etc, etc. Fine, so we're going into these here ruins, which is going to involve taking on some rot balls, which is apparently what this is. Oh, yep, yeah, and then big attack. Ah, here we go, the game's finally actually explaining it. So every attack adds to your combo bar, with enough combo power you can form a special attack. Which, with the iron bar, is just whacking things. So let's actually just go for that now. So just, yep, yeah, whack that in. Ooh, it's different. Okay, so with the actual kind of just the metal pipe, it was just wacky, wacky, whack. Whereas with this thing, it's actually a great big leapy jumpy stab. So every weapon's got its own special attack attached to it. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Interesting. So clerics are like high techie lads, I believe. And they've left some big old camp here. Oh no, that's a teleporter. Right, well that's bloody useful. Now who is this? One dead cleric. And that's got me, aha, Cleric Weaponry and Elixit, whatever that is exactly. It's different from Elix. Elixit is like different entirely. One of them's Adam and one of them's Gold or something. Also, I think that guy's actually fighting in there. <laughs> Maybe I should go in and like help him out or something. I don't, oh bloody hell. Right, it's a bit dark. Hopefully my eyes will just, yep, don't worry, I'm just grinding against rats for XP. And I can just have a quick nap here, presumably getting my health back. Have a quick nap, let that guy take care of the rest of everything for me. <laughs> ah, lovely. And that does indeed get my health back. Marvellous. Now that cleric weapon that I had, uh-oh. Apparently there's, there's a big thing roughly heading this way. Maybe just quickly assign it, uh, oh no. Right, so weapons also have skudic requirements. So sadly, I don't have the, oh. I don't have the ammo or the skill to use this thing. Fine. But a mission report... Interesting, so I'm learning some stuff about these bastards. Cleric weapons and mental energy reserves. I tell you what, these guys have got kind of badass costumes and appear to know like magic. And also they killed the weird devil goat creature. So, you know, that's impressive too. These ruins look like they were some sort of machine shop in the old world. You know about the old world. Only what I've learned on my travels. Ruins and wreckage. The old world is irrelevant. Irrelevant? It's where we all came from. The Berserkers want to grow the world back to what it was. The other factions pick through its bones, hoping to find the technology it left us. So from the way he puts it, his faction is basically hippies, but with massive grey axes. Okay, this is potentially intriguing. Take a bundle of old world money. I will gladly take a bundle of old world money and another corpse too. Right, more weaponry and a fine cup and a prayer book too. And a recipe. Nice. Missy, see, the game said this is the dangerous option. Or possibly it just means you chose the brave thing that sounded like it would be more dangerous. That doesn't actually necessarily mean it's going to be more dangerous. But I suspect we'll run into something yet. Or possibly... There was already something, he just went ahead and murdered it for me. Thank you very much, Hadvar. So there's the field report from the clerics. Basically they're, ah, they're just future Jehovah's Witnesses in really cool helmets. On the plus side, they get psychic powers. On the downside, they go around annoying everyone, trying to spread their religion. So, there's pros and cons. 
Also, I just gained some XP for reading those books, because by virtue of just learning something, I just ever so slightly increased my XP, which I really like. It's the same reason I actually really flipping like the feature in Mass Effect 1. It just feels like every little thing you do, every tiny interaction you have with the world is beneficial to you. You just get a tiny bit of XP to represent that knowledge is power. I approve of this hugely. Right, well, let's step out of here. See if he decides to catch it. Ooh, is that the fifth cleric weapon? Dangerous goods. So I've got five cleric weapons. Gain some XP for a little... I suppose, kind of unmarked quest I just stumbled across there. Also, apparently I've got a map. This is where I am, this camp around here, and then the rest of the game is... Oh, blimey. Right, so it's it's pretty damn big then. Got it. Aha, uh -huh. I can't use the weapons, but he might be interested in them. Here, I found these. Elix technology. It's forbidden to berserkers. Officially, you're supposed to hand it in when you arrive in Goliath, but... That'll be your choice. Just don't go flashing those weapons around when we get back, okay? Some berserkers are really strict about the laws. Others are more lenient. You see, we leave the albs and the clerics to rely on machines. In Edan, we use magic. Okay, hippies with giant axes and magic once again. Coming around to Durus's way of thinking here. Right, so let's just actually skirt around the outside of the giant monstrosity over there. Maybe we just ignore him, and I just help out with you, and oh, okay, avoid that, because... Okay, the combat takes a little bit of getting used to, to be honest. Oh, okay, you decided to go for me, did you? And, oh dear, avoid, avoid, I don't have enough actual stamina for... Okay, I'm just going to drink health potion... And I'm going to let this guy protect me. He's my new friend. He can do all of this. And I'll just basically let him get on with it. And I'll stay at the back. Maybe what I ought to do is get like some form of gun. And use that. Or potentially a bow and arrow. I feel like these guys are more bow and arrow sort of guys. Or magic. I could learn some magic. Magic might be fun. And then someone else could tank for me. So Durus just wants me to follow him up there. But can't help but see... There's, yeah, just loads of little side areas down over here. Okay, let's get the... Oh! Okay, now big attack. And then, oh, okay. And then avoid or parry. And then go for you. And then bigger attack. And then just go for a special move. Go for a special move. Go for a special move. Oh, yeah, that'll do the job. Right, and then go for... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, dear. This this was a mistake. This was a mistake. Okay, of Void or just block. Yeah, just block, 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 block. And get oh blimey. Go for a quick attack. Into a bigger track. And go. Bigger attack and a void. And go for a bigger attack and go for a go for a, a block. And go for a quick attack. Oh, block. Oh darn it. It's a little fiddly, but I actually kind of like the combat. It's quite brutal. And there's a tape here as well. We need this damn thing, but these mutants are everywhere. There! There, you hear that? They're coming from above. Hey, you idiots! Move your asses and get them! Okay, someone called Ruby. Let's try this again. Okay, let's make this work. So, weapon, block. How well does the block work? Not desperately well, to be honest. The block seems to be kind of, you know, pretty much just for decorative purposes. And pull them back, and one at a time, and try and move, and try and move, and vaguely pull them back, and one at a time, and... Okay, I think that's sort of worked, but it's messy as hell. <laughs> See, I'm not quite decided on the combat yet. Either I'm just terrible at the combat, or the combat requires quite a lot of... Is that actually a broom? Is that actually a weapon I can use as a broom? Please let that actually be a weapon I could use, because that would just be marvellous. Boo! It's not. It's just a bit of scrap I can sell later. Right, now down here, now I've cleared out those two. Aha! You are indeed Ruby. And you had some, ah, some currency on you. And also, you had a bunch of friends. These are outlaws. So outlaws are like kind of fiends in New Vegas. People are talking about them like they're druggies. And use the Elix as, basically, as drugs. So yeah, everyone else is like, oh, let's use the Elix to develop magic powers, or no, let's use the Elix to bring life back to the forest. These guys are like, you know what? Maybe we could snort it. Has anyone tried snorting it? Because I bet you'd get really flipping high. And then this just brings me straight back outside where, uh-oh, right, avoid and 
go and go into more and now special move there we go took a light knock there but yeah as long as you're getting your timings light into heavy into light into heavy and then just pick your right moment to dive out of the way not so bad and now i'm now i'm down here oh i think i was up there so now i've just basically left durus alone right now go over here and we can just gently jetpack over the top of this. Yeah, need to remember to use my jetpack a little bit more. Because I feel like that would be useful for avoiding, like, problems and stuff. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. I've just caused... Durus! Are you still over there? Because I've just caused trouble with some people who have got... I think they've got melee weapons, actually. Durus, I've got a plan. What I've got a plan about is... What I need you to do is... No, Durus, the... Durus! Durus! They're, they're right here, Durus! And one of them seems to have some form of laser sword. Durus! Durus! Save me! Oh dear. I feel like I've made a mistake here. Durus! Okay, I'm just going to hide on top of this rock. Yeah, screw you. And now I'm up here. And... Good! Now they're going for Durus! I think one of them's got a chainsaw sword. <laughs> yep. Well, luckily, I have got a jetpack. So I guess... I wonder if Durus is... I think Durus is dead. Right, well, that's unfortunate because I liked Durus. Um, right. Basically, I shouldn't have caused trouble with those guys. Also, where's Gully at? Because I don't actually know. He was leading me. Hmm. I kind of assumed I was playing one of those sorts of games where there were essential characters. But as it turns out, there's not. Right, go for the chop. Right. The death or glory charge was really more just death, wasn't it? Right, I've decided I'm not going to upset the guys who are carrying around the chainsaws. Instead, me and Duras are just going to go and be friends together. Because he's not actually good enough to handle that. So let's just ignore the terrifying murder monsters. So here we are. We have got ourselves... Wait, what? Was that just... Was that just a bit of bread? Right, or possibly it's a type of mushroom, and also a teleporter. Turn that on, and then I can teleport from place to place. Good, now I can just teleport back to Goliath whenever I want. So there's kind of fast travel, like, you know, midway to fast travel, just certain teleporty points. And here we are. Now, I was warned, when I actually get in here, I need to turn over, or I'm supposed to turn over, weapons. All right, you can stop there. In the name of the Hooded Crows, and with a power invested in me by the warlords of Goliath, I hereby challenge you to state who you are and what you want. You should know that Goliath is eternally vigilant in its search for Alps. Yeah, well, Duras sent me here, so I'm just here to, like, hang out and go shopping and whatever. Oh, you're one of Duras's hand me are ya? You better think about reporting to Ragnar, or one of the other warlords when you get in then. Right, well, I'm inside, and this guy didn't even actually ask me to hand over the cleric weapon, so... I mean, I would have done. If you just asked me to, I 100% would have done. I was right ready to do that, because I want to fit in with these guys. These guys apparently, like, you know, they know magic, and want to regrow the world and plant forests everywhere, and also have nice badass armor and massive axes, and also bows. Like, basically, I can just pretend I'm playing Skyrim, and everything will be marvelous. So in terms of companions, there's Duras who's wandered off, but maybe I can go and check in with him later. Also, apparently, a little robot drone went down somewhere, but I don't know where he is now, so let's actually mark him on the map for the moment. Apparently, a crony U4, which would be, like, useful, is actually not too far from where I am, so I could have a little robo-buddy. Okay, that probably wouldn't be a bad starting point. So let's leave town and go and work on that just for the time being. Because also, fall distance is aggressive in this game. If you jump downstairs, you take damage. Blimey. So it looks like if I just skirt around the outside of this here bit of town, I'll actually get to where I want to go, I think. If I just, yeah, follow the path around the outskirts, it should lead me in the right direction, to go and find my little robo-buddy. Then I can have a robo-friend, and then probably the hippies won't actually like me so much. This area's restricted. No entry. Oh, never mind then. And, ooh. Okay, I'm going in over your dead body if necessary. <laughs> Requires combat too. I don't have combat too. I don't have combat anything. What is this place? This is the pit. Any elex, any forbidden technology that comes into Goliath, 
This is where it's kept. Move along there. Move along. Ah, so they've already found my robot and they're keeping it in the pit locked away with all the other forbidden bits and pieces. Okay, so if I want to get my robo buddy back, I'm actually going to need some help or like to infiltrate the society or be good enough to intimidate him because everything seems to have multiple solutions. So other things I've learnt, there are Albs, admittedly the guys who shot me previously and left me for dead, so I'm not sure why I'd go and trust them, but they're just some Alb raiders. So I could go and have a chat to them, might have to fight them too, okay, or I could go to Goliath instead, which seems like a much better idea, because I could just basically have ignored Doris or let him die or gone elsewhere entirely, like the game's totally not like forcing me down any path, I've literally made these choices. Also, I've got 500 Alexit now thanks to stealing money off those druggies I found down in the sewers. So actually, that might be enough I could just find a trainer in town to get some training going on. And finally, yeah, okay, we've also got separatists, Albs who have left the area that tried to murder me. So potentially, could go and have a chat to them. Where are you on the map exactly? Oh, okay. Turns out, turns out quite some dist- Right, maybe we don't go and speak to them first. Yes, Ray, a scavenger who Duras mentioned might have my armor, is much closer by. So if I want to get some super badass awesome armor, yeah, just getting myself started off in this little town, then heading north to try and get my starting armor back. That might work. Jump off the thing, and then just jetpack over. I like how the anti-technology hippies don't seem to have any objection to me literally using a jetpack in front of them. That's just marvelous. Right, gotta find someone who's got a name other than just Cultivator. Or worker, or whatever. Someone around here's got to have a name. So if I'm looking for a trainer, then they'll have names, presumably. Hello, you probably have a name. Yes, you're Cinder. Another incomer. Are you here to trade, fight, or just add another mouth to the masses? I don't know. Are you a companion, a shop, or a love interest? Also, I'm not sure with what tone of voice I'm supposed to read this one, but let's give it a go. You must have something to offer apart from shards. Do I have charisma 4? I don't know if I have charisma 4. Nope, skill level too low. Can't do that one. I'm not sure what I actually... Wait, which is charisma? Is charisma... Charisma is probably one of the things I need trading in, which I need to get up to four learning skill points in until I can take that. Fine. You know what? Oh, teach me something. Yeah, can you teach me something? You a trainer? Teach me something. Of course. Well, that was remarkably easy. Fine, so she is, aha. She is, it turns out, is a personality trainer. So she can teach me to be a nicer person, but only if I've invested sufficiently in cunning and intelligence, basically, which so far I have not. So quite feasibly, I could have got myself up to cunning 25, intelligence 15 by now, I think anyway. And if I had done that, I'd be able to immediately give 10 attribute points. Wait, sorry. So I need to use learning points to learn attribute points to... This is very confusing. Ah, this looks reasonable. She's willing to sell me a forge wrench. That's, that's only a tiny bit better than my basic axe, to be honest. And I do have the skill for it. But yeah, it's only one more damage, and it's quite expensive, so I'll pass on that for now, I think. A hatchet would be loads better, but I've nowhere near enough skill to use the damn thing. Okay, further bonus points for the Berserkers. They appear to have built massive great ballista things on wheels, which I greatly approve of, and I'm allowed to climb on top of, which kind of suggests to me if I was just kind of position myself right about here, and then someone were to fire them, I could fire myself on a giant ballista bolt, which I am very, very much in favour of. Yes, excuse me, could you just pull the trigger, because this is going to be badass. Ah, I've accidentally run into the war chief, Ragnar, or rather temporary war chief. The real one's kind of off on meditation somewhere. Um, now, if this were Fallout 4, I'd tell him I'm an Alb defector, because in Fallout 4, it's kind of funny deliberately trying to screw up and watching the game script desperately try to avoid you screwing up. Like in Fallout 4, this guy would respond, ha ha, well you're clearly not because you don't look anything like an Alb. This guy in this game, based on what I've seen so far, if I tell him I'm an Alb defector, there's every chance he'll actually believe me, take me at face value, and he might just stab me in the face for it. But equally, it could open doors for me, as long as I say I'm actually a defector, given they do know that Alb Separatists exist. Okay, I'm gonna go for it, see if he stabs me in the face. I am an Alb defector. My people tried to kill me, and I'm seeking refuge. Ah. You survived an Alb execution? Hmm. 
Even if that is true, then you marched straight into the lion's den. So you had better think very carefully about your next answer. Again, what exactly do you want here? I want to learn magic, get some armor, everything will be marvelous. I don't know that. I want to learn how to do magic because it sounds kind of awesome, but... Need your protection. Don't need your protection. It's fine. I'm just looking for some work, some money, some armor, some magic. I'm looking for work. You can prove yourself by helping the people of Idan. There is more than enough work to go around. So if you want to be tolerated here, you must follow my rules. These rules are very simple. If you harm the Berserker community, you will pay. If you serve the community, you will receive fair compensation for it. You know what? I like that book of laws. It's nice and short and easy to remember. You are definitely the boss. So this is definitely not just a Skyrim situation where I can show up in 10 minutes later, be guild master of the local college or whatever. No, 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 no. This guy wants me to go around, help people, do loads of little missions, earn the people's trust, then come back to him, join up, work my way up through society, then maybe I'll get some armor if I'm lucky. Yeah, I feel like I'm not just going to basically throw money at people and get taught how to use fireballs, unfortunately. As cool as that would be. Ah, speak of those weapons we mentioned earlier. Yeah, Bertram's just sought me out, and apparently... He's willing to pay for the weapons, so I could hand them over to the pit. Though he actually mentioned a pair of weapons. I swear I've got five. What's your offer, Bertram? I might be interested. We'll see. What will you pay me for them? Of course, of course. I can offer you a lexit if you give them to me. That would only be fair. And should you wish to learn more about technology, I could point you to where answers can be found. Okay. I'd say that seems reasonable. I'll sell the weapons. I'll sell the weapons to you. Sell? No, think of this as a finder's fee. I'll make sure these get back to the right place. Alright. 300 shards received, got rid of the weapons, and also picked up 200 XP for my trouble. Lovely. Aha, uh -huh. I think I've found a nice little starting quest here. Nice simple one. Angram here, who just sits on a throne made of breeze blocks, wants a weapon from the pit. Now that suggests I'm going to have access to the pit, which I want access to anyway, because the pit, conveniently, should let me actually get over to my little robo-buddy. You're an armorsmith, by the way. And once again, someone selling the old forge wrench. Fine. Everything else is hugely more powerful, but yeah, till you've got the skill to wield it, not very useful at all. I tell you what, let's actually spend some money on some good stuff here. I'm going to take a forge wrench... And I'm going to take the worker armor as well. I can just afford both. Take that tech to the pit. It should be disposed of. Also, I just got out my little kind of pit boy and everyone's yelling at me to take it to the pit. Oops. Ooh, also I've got... Oh, bloody hell. Apparently, I leveled up, so I've got loads of attribute points. So possibly, I've got something far better... Okay, hang the flip on. Wait, where did you just... Where's he naffed off to? Excuse me. Can I have a refund, please? I might potentially be able to use something much better. Actually, no offense, there's nothing much more I could just get up to straight away, because everything else is quite a way off. But, he is willing to sell me, if I've got the money, a cultivator bow. Now, that strikes me as useful, but now I don't have the money for it. Okay, potentially we might actually have something going on here, yes. And there we are, now I've got worker armor on. And also, I've got myself a nice little... Forge no don't don't lock on to don't lock on to people. Goodness sake, we're supposed to be friendly. Right, down to the pit. Now I've got some good quality armor and weapons, or at least slightly better quality. We need to earn ourselves some money so I can get a bow, which strikes me as a much better idea. And as I'm just going back into town, Drog wants a free beer. Oh go on then, I'll get Drog a free beer, because I need friends if I'm gonna talk these people round. Cause it feels like, yeah, there's a bit of a faction system where slowly you win people round one by one. Happen to know where the bar is, it's up top here. So I'm just gonna basically buy him a beer, take it back down to him. Hello there, or no, don't steal. And how much for one bit? Sorry, beer costs oh good. I thought that meant beer costs 65. No, beer costs 10 and you've got 65 of them. Right, so 10, whatever, gold, something, for that beer. Take the beer back down to Drog. This is a nice, easy quest just to actually get a friend on my side locally. That will be very welcome. Hello there, Drog. I've brought you a beer. Ah, that's what I need. 
About time, too. And so here's where you give me my reward. Your reward was getting in through that gate. Be grateful. Letting people in is your job. So is keeping people out. I give the word and you'll never get in here. You know what? I'm not sure I like this drug person. But do I actually have combat one by any chance? No, I don't actually even have that. You know what? I don't want trouble. I'll just naff off. I don't want trouble. Good. I thought you might see sense. And seeing as you played by the rules, I'll put in a word for you with the boss man himself. Ragnar. Warlord of the Hooded Crows. You need pledges if you want promotion. And we need reliable people in our clan. So yeah, there's a proper little faction system going on here. Gonna need to keep people on side and happy and do them favours. So they decide to speak up for me when I ultimately want to progress through this faction. Or I could just say screw this faction and go join in the other factions. Because the game is very clear that I can just basically go and join whoever I want. If I don't fancy playing Skyrim, I can just go and play Mass Effect with the cultists instead. Right, now this house looks like the right one right here. Yes, indeed. So through we go. Hello, ah, Jora, marvelous. Hey, what's that you're hiding there? What are you talking about? There on your arm. What is that? Oh, it's my pit boy. It's fine. Anyway, Angram sent me to collect an Elix weapon from you. And you want me to give you this weapon, do you? Well, that's actually my job that I've been given from one of the local war chiefs. So yes, actually. Yes. Where is it? I have it in my house. It's awaiting processing at the pit. If you want it, you'll find it there. And I can take it? You know your instructions. You know where the weapon is. Why do I have a horrible feeling this is some form of complete total trap? Also, could I help myself to... Oh, sadly, I can't just help myself to his money. It would probably be a bad idea. Uh, hang on, is it this thing over here? Take the... Okay, well, it's saying forbidden. Like... Is it forbidden? I'm getting mixed messages here, because this is this is it, right? Yeah, defective Elix weapon. Stop, thief. You think you're gonna get away with stealing from here? I'm not stealing anything. Our laws are clear. Any Elix technology should be given over to the pit, and it stays there. You told me where I could find the weapon. I did, but I didn't say you should take it. You didn't say I shouldn't. I've decided I don't like Jora. Return to Angrim. It's his test. It's for him to explain everything. Follow me, and let us hope for your sake that he grants you clemency. Oh, bloody hell. So, you have broken our laws. I didn't mean to. You gave me a simple, oh, bloody hell, right? You know what? I kind of actually admire the game for doing that. This guy gave me a quick lecture on the laws, and I did know that one of the rules was Elix technology stays in the pit. Then he gave me a job that was actively breaking the law. So I should have not done it. Right. I see. <laughs> this is not just one of those games where the game says, hey, please fetch X from Y and bring it back to me. And you do it and he gives you a pile of money. No, you actually have to think about it because sometimes the game deliberately gives you quests you're not supposed to do if they break the local laws and faction system. Bloody hell. <laughs> I'm impressed, but also, this game requires a lot of attention to do right. Also, can't help but notice that Jorah's right here right now. He is actually walking back to his house. So in theory, if I was to sprint over to his house right now, I could get to his house before he- Oh, bloody hell. Wait, where is anything? Oh, this place is too confusing. I need to get back to his house before he gets there. I think it's like, down this way or something. Also, I think I just ran past a different subquest, I'm not sure. Yeah, here we go. This way, this way, this way. So, hang on. You're not... No, you're not Jorah. Fine. So, now I've made it back to Jorah's house before Jorah gets here. So, basically, uh, screw Jorah is my position. So, I'm just going to... No one's around here right now. Nope. I'm just going to... Screw you. I'm having his money. Right, that was just one money. Oh, but... But, 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 but. Uh, I'll have the collectible toy car. And I'll be having all of your stuff, basically. Screw you, Jorah. For your stupid troll mission. Okay, up here, up here, up here. Take his money. Just one. Oh, hang on. Carton of cigarettes. More Alexits. Yeah, I'll be having all of your stuff. There we are. Ooh, 200 cigarettes and 10 Alexits. Oh, flipping dear. Right, and now just be out of here before he gets back. And screw you, you stupid bastard. Right, good. Now, if I'm right, this should be directly down into the pit. Now, if I had, yeah, because there's the gate. Now, I've got a jetpack. 
So, my position would basically be, how about I just nip down and have a little look-see? Because I can totally do that right now. So, just jet pack down here. And as long as no one sees me down here in the pit, yeah, I can just hop down here. Thanks to my jet pack, jet pack, jet, jet pack. Now, take all of this forbidden stuff. Including, they just basically threw money down here. Okay, fine. And take all of this, and take mental energy, and antitoxins, and... Ooh, a drone control. I'll have all of this, thank you. Now, sulfur nuggets. If I'm right, go over to my quest log here. Companions, half-defective tin cam. Mark on the map. Uh-oh. Did someone just yell at me? Someone seen me? Yeah, it's over here somewhere. So now we just go over here. Movement detector. And I'm going to guess that some of this stuff is stuff I need to repair my little robo buddy. Grab all this. Where is he? He's up. Oh, hello. Right. You're apparently crony U4. This hello there. U4. What are you doing here? You were supposed to have remained with me. Why did you leave the crash site? Survival protocol 7. Commander presumed dead. U4 unit attempted return to repair station. And is dead, you are found by berserkers. Now I'm gonna guess that little bits I can find here are what you're missing by any chance? Identifying. Nearest automated repair station is in North Abessa. Then go. But U4, you are not to report on my status. If asked about me, state that I died in the crash. I will meet you at the repair station in Abessa. <laughs> Okay, so I've sent him off. No, not in that direction. That's a man with an axe who hates robots. So I really wouldn't go that... Okay, fine. Just go past the man who hates robots. Nope, the man who hates robots doesn't actually care. Uh, I think that's something else down there, isn't it? And that is... Ah, more antitoxins. Gold nuggets. Nice, this is all good stuff. Right, I'm feeling like I'm not making progress with these guys. So I've got a better plan. See, if I just basically head, yeah, along this road around here and just basically head north, I can get to Ray, who apparently potentially has stolen my armor. So as these guys aren't exactly helping me out that fast, that might not be a terrible idea. Especially as I am, if I can just get past this wagon, I am Captain Jetpack. So logically, I can actually, like, you know, get around the world fairly easily, all things considered. At least, you know, more easily than some people can. Because I can just jump down into... You see this? This is why I need a jetpack. So when I accidentally throw myself off a cliff, it's not actually a major problem. Yeah, I think if you just basically focus on running, you can actually get past the enemies without fighting if you want to. Fine. So now I'm down in the bottom of this here valley. And this seems pretty safe for the time being, at least. And yeah, actually, this isn't quite as far as I thought it was going to be. Head up here, over a lake, and Ray will be right on the far side of it. Here, and this is... What is this? Ah, Sulfur Vein. So I've had the ability to mine in some capacity. That would be marvellous. And there's a bridge right there. Right, just jetpack over up top here if I can. And boom! Lovely. Everything is good. Oh, I can't handle a raptor though. Oh, no, 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 D don't, don't even try. Don't even try. Don't even, okay, this is where the dinosaurs live apparently. Right, just go, just go. Don't, don't attempt to that. Don't, just don't fight that. Drink a potion. Right, this is where the dinosaurs live. I'm not ready for them, Um, as it turns out. Maybe I should have actually stayed where I was and got some better weapons and armor. <laughs> But screw it, I want my armour back. Uh, the original armour that was stolen from me. Yeah, if I just stay on the cliffs and, like, focus on flying, this will be fine. He's the one I saw on the mountain. Right, also, where did I get this sword from? So we meet again. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you want from me? Let's get straight into business here. Give me the armour, I won't kill you. Shit! You're him? How did you survive? Honestly, I didn't think I was stealing. I, I thought it was salvage. I thought you were dead. Three years before execution. Wait, who's execution and my execution? All must bow to the hybrid or 
die. Right, so that's me before I got the Elix out of my system. I was a bit of a dick by the looks of it. You know, one slight problem with this game is you don't up in a scenario where everything takes a lot of work to actually get anywhere, which sometimes means it actually feels like you're not making much progress. So, though I really admire a lot of it, I genuinely do. Yeah, finding that guy hasn't actually got me my armor. It's just got me a new set of subquests that I can use to potentially go and find my armor, like, later. So instead, I'm gonna go and see if I can actually just find those, uh, yeah, the other albs that potentially are going to be a bit annoyed at me. Aha! Uh -huh. And I've found my way to some albs. Unfortunately, these are like the emotionless evil killing, you must serve the hybrid or die, folks. And I'm not into that anymore, so I feel like this isn't going to go well. Yeah, also, I'm wearing like a... Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a problem. Oh, luckily they've decided to put away their energy weapons in order to actually just uh, come and attack me with... Please let me stand up here. Nice! Right. So these guys have decided they can't be bothered with the- Oh no, they've got out the energy weapons now! Now they've decided they do want to use the energy weapons, and now I regret going up there and basically provoking them to do that. I feel like I'm not- I'm not ready for this. Go! Get inside! <laughs> Hide! Oh bloody hell. Uh, take the- take the everything. That's- that's just a Roomba. Don't worry about that. Save me, Roomu! There's a switch. I'm gonna push the switch. What does that even do? I'm gonna get up top. Yeah, do more switches. Get up top! Hide! That good? No, that was- in many ways, this is not a friendly world. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, I think you get the point. This here is Elix, and I really flipping admire it, because it is just basically a seriously proper hardcore game. No baby hand-holding, oh, could you please go and collect five flowers from outside the town? Oh, you have done it, now you shall be men. No. No, none of that whatsoever. <laughs> This game just basically goes and says, oh yes, why don't you go and do this for me? No, you didn't pay attention to rule 77B. Now you have to go and actually make amends for your failure by going into the Death Valley or something, something, something. This game is seriously proper taking itself seriously. You actually have to be paying attention in order to actually do a good job here. I like it. But it is actually a game that properly is going to demand... Clearly, hours and hours and hours of your time to actually have a proper good time here because you need to be, you know, working with the factions and optimising your loadout because you are flimsy and everything murders you. And that's the only real major weak point I've noticed so far, which is I'm not thrilled with the combat. It feels a bit clunky and sometimes it's hard to predict whether you're about to do damage or take damage or whatever. So, yeah. It's a bit of an interesting mixed bag. I mean, there's bits of it I absolutely adore. Like, I like the fact that, like, right at the beginning, you get given a jetpack, and now... Actually, wait, this is the... This is the area I came through right at the beginning, and I had a flipping jetpack at this point. And rather than going with that guy, I could have just... Ooh! Okay! You can just climb up to the top of this here building with your jetpack. Like, right at the beginning of the game. Yeah, it just basically gives you huge amounts of openness and opportunity if you just want to basically go around and explore and do your own thing and find your own way in the world and all of that good stuff. And now I'm up top. And now that I'm up top, there's just this little thing here. A chest, which I can't open because I haven't actually got the lockpicking skill yet. And now there's just some gold and also some form of clue related to something. I'm a bit lost on that one. Oh, there's some Elix. Just some natural Elix, which I still don't exactly know how you use. Because I haven't found one person who can train me, aside from that one charisma trainer. And I didn't specialise in charisma, so... It is a hardcore little game that arguably has a bit too much that's not tutorialised well enough. There's a bit too much stuff going on. It's all very intimidating to someone who's new into it. It's not really new player friendly. And the combat is clunky. But there's things I do love about it. There's things I do love about it, the openness and everything. Can I make it over there? I probably can. Maybe, 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 yet. Yeah, just gently hover over. Nice. And now I'm just up top here. And I've got myself some metal scraps. And I'm just up the... Ah! This is the very... I could have got up here easily, actually. Yep, and that's just magnesium torches and healing potions and all sorts. So now there's all this stuff up here. And yeah, first time I came through here, I didn't even think about that. But now, now there's all this extra stuff on the roof and everything. I admire this game. I admire this game, but I also kind of don't want to play it anymore because 
It just feels like it's one of those games where, yeah, if you're not willing to commit to a full-on 40 hours of playing nothing but this and possibly also reading several strategy guides at the same time, you're not going to have a good time. But for some people, that probably looks absolutely amazing. So recommended for certain types of people, I would say. That's Elix right there, but I think that's me done with this for now. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been the really rather fascinating Elix. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, sadly, I cannot be the Santa Claus of murder tonight. So apparently, even though this thing is- Oh, no, no, you can't. No, you most certainly can't. Okay. Is that the symbol meaning I'm about to pull her over? Yep, there we are. There we- Oh! I feel like she didn't necessarily survive that. No, she's very dead.